guys, Harry Thomas here, and welcome back to another ranking. Uh, for today's ranking, I shall be ranking my favourite movie franchise of all time period, Star Wars. The franchise that started all franchises 40 years ago, uh, way back in 1977 with A New Hope, the movie that changed cinema forever and the scope of movies. Uh, so um, now with the release of The Last uh, Jedi, uh, it's the perfect time to rank all 12 Star Wars movies. I shall be including even the ones that uh, people tend to, to overlook uh, in their uh, uh, lists. Uh, now, uh, uh, I uh, cannot wait uh, to uh, hear uh, your rankings also in the comments below. Uh, so without further ado, let's start uh, from uh, my least favourite and work my way up to my favourite. Coming in at number 13, you all predicted this one would be at the bottom and you couldn't be more right. The Star Wars Holiday Special. <sighs> What the fuck even is this? This isn't Star Wars. It's as if George Lucas wanted to just throw out a Star Wars holiday special. He just made up a list of shit. So there's there's no structure to this special. Like, I don't even consider it canon. Uh, in, in fact, uh, why the hell would you make a Star Wars holiday special when Christmas doesn't even exist in the Star Wars universe? Uh, these, this holiday special is, uh, I am not so shitting you guys, uh, pure fucking torture to uh, get uh, through. I mean, uh, all it consists of is uh, Wookiees uh, uh, roaring, it's going Wah! and there's no fucking subtitles, so we can't understand uh, what the flying uh, fuck they're saying. Uh, my my ears were bleeding uh, throughout the special, and uh, the, in fact, uh, uh, the vast majority of the special, literally 90% of it consists of no uh, cooler uh, action uh, adventure stuff uh, that we want to see, but of a uh, a uh, boring ass uh, uh, videos uh, that the Wookiees just watch in their house uh, of uh, uh, Grandpa Wookiee uh, watching a uh, porn of how an instruction video how to build a transmitter and that and a cooking channel a fucking cooking channel in Star Wars where she goes stir whip stir whip 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 stir I shall do an extreme rant on uh, this pile of ass one day coming in at night Number 12, the second of the two unnecessary uh, Ewok movies uh, that nobody asked for, Ewok's Battle for Endor. Uh, how the hell did the Ewoks get their own spin-off movies? They were one of the weaker elements of Return of the Jedi, so uh, none of us wanted to see them again. Uh, these these two Ewok movies aren't even canon. Uh, uh, they, they never, uh, well... Uh, uh, are uh, relevant uh, to uh, the Skywalker storyline, uh, uh, but uh, at least uh, with these Ewok movies, are uh, at least uh, they're eons better than the holiday special since they're laughably bad, so you can enjoy how bad they are. Uh, but uh, the reason I uh, give uh, the edge to Ewok Caravan of Courage is simply because uh, that movie has... Uh, the, uh, at least the lighter tone that uh, younger viewers uh, can enjoy. This uh, movie is a little too uh, dark with the dark stuff. I mean, in the opening, in the intro, literally this little girl's entire family get obliterated. What kid uh, would want to watch uh, that? Uh, at number 11, the more bearable of the two Ewoks movies, but still awful, Caravan of Courage and Ewok Adventure. This movie uh, at least has the approach appropriate uh, light-hearted and, and funner toner for uh, the younger audience uh, that uh, it's appealing to, so uh, kids can watch it and like it fine, but aside from that, this is not a good movie. It has uh, Burl Ibes, that's right, uh, the snowman narrator from Rudolph is in this movie. He feels out of place, and uh, the acting is uh, still atrocious from everybody. It looks... Uh, it, it's it's such a uh, boring, uh, predictable, and uh, safe story, and it like I said, it's unnecessary. We don't need these Ewoks movies; they ain't canon. 
And Coming in at number 10, the first official uh, animated uh, Star Wars feature, Star Wars The Clone Wars. Uh, this is an, yet another Star Wars movie that simply doesn't need to exist. Uh, this should have been the uh, pilot episodes uh, for... Uh, the TV show, but George Lucas just wanted to make this into a movie as a toy commercial. They even designed the characters as the action figures uh, to uh, to convince you to buy the toys. I mean, uh, uh, Anakin and Ahsoka have the most annoying and cringy banter that gets on your nerves. The dialogue uh, is for uh, the littlest of kids, for toddlers. Yoda does jack shit apart from give exposition. And uh, the the whole uh, uh, thing isn't canon. It messes up, uh, you know, Jabba the Hutt's uh, character arc. Jabba never had a son in Return of the Jedi, but uh, at least uh, the action scenes are uh, uh, rather epic and uh, and thrilling uh, whenever they're on screen. At and... number nine, a Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace, uh, the first of the prequels. I am a Far uh, much more generous uh, to the Phantom Menace uh, than uh, uh, almost every, practically every Star Wars fan in the universe. Uh, at least uh, you can't deny Phantom Menace haters that uh, the pod race uh, is amazing and uh, the uh, Duel of Fates uh, is one of the greatest lightsaber duels in the entire Star Wars saga. Darth Maul uh, is a freaking badass uh, Sith Lords, uh, one of our favourites, and uh, the uh, movie has uh, the least CGI of the prequels. Uh, if only uh, the cool things uh, were more prominent in the movie, at least the movie would have uh, cut down on the boring politics and uh, the uh, taxation plots uh, that uh, nobody wanted to see in Star Wars. Uh, and Jar Jar Binks, uh, he's okay. Uh, I don't believe he's as bad as everyone says but he just needed less screen time at number eight star wars episode two attack of the clones uh now again uh, i uh, believe uh, there are some uh well, uh, great aspects about uh, episode two that people overlook, just like Phantom Menace. Uh, this uh, movie at least uh, ups the action from Phantom Menace and has much less Jar Jar, thank God. And uh, even if the romance, uh, even if the dialogue uh, is uh, odd, uh, at least uh, the romance, uh, it has a purpose. It leads to something. And uh, the... Uh, third act of Attack of the Clones, the climatic Clone Wars battle, uh, is uh, one of the most ambitious and, uh, and thoroughly entertaining third acts uh, in Star Wars. And we actually get to see Yoda fight. How is that not badass? At number seven, Rogue One. Rogue One, uh, for me, is the most overrated Star Wars movie. Uh, don't get me wrong, it's a passable prequel uh, uh, to A New Hope at best. Uh, at least it has an enjoyable performance from Felicity Jones as Jyn Erso and Kate Uso is hilarious. It has epic moments for sure, like the Battle of Scarif and Darth Vader gets two well, uh, well uh, incredible sequences where we see him just uh, laying waste to the rebels. Uh, but uh, the characters are uh, totally bland and boring as shit and the storytelling uh, felt a little clunky and muzzle for me at times, and uh, Director Krennic is the worst Star Wars villain Yes, In fact, Darth Vader should have been the villain of Rogue One. At number six, uh, the most divisive Star Wars uh, movie ever made uh, yet, uh, Star Wars The Last Jedi. Uh, the Last Jedi isn't a bad Star Wars movie, but uh, in my opinion, it's the most underwhelming. As I says uh, in my review, I uh, absolutely love the moments between Ray and Luke on Oct 2, and uh, uh, Mark Hamill and Carrie Fisher give their most emotional performance in the franchise. Yes, and Kylo Ren even gets. Uh, a uh, well, a relatable uh, arc. Uh, the but uh, Snoke, uh, uh, they do they do nothing with him after they hyped him up as an amazing villain. Captain Phasma gets one uh, scene, and and the ending just uh, totally sucks. Uh, it goes. 
it, it, it says, uh, fuck you to all the fans, basically. Yeah, that, and yeah, this movie, I, I, it just uh, wasn't the movie I was hoping it would be. At least the Porgs were adorable. At number five, a uh, controversial choice, uh, but Star Wars Episode Six: Return of the Jedi. Yeah, this uh, is a totally my least favourite of the original Star Wars trilogy. If it weren't uh, for the Ewoks, uh, this would be a near flawless conclusion to uh, a uh, outstanding and groundbreaking original Star Wars trilogy. At least uh, I, I uh, freaking uh, love uh, the uh, ob the opening action sequence where they're trying to rescue Hana from Jabba, and uh, and the Battle of Endor minus uh, the Ewoks uh, is exhilarating, and uh, the uh, parts uh, with uh, Luke facing down Vader in the Emperor's throne room are some of the most emotional scenes uh, from Star Wars are in that uh, uh, one scene. At number four, most controversial choice, uh, please don't hurt me, Star Wars uh, Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. Uh, this is uh, by far the most underrated Star Wars installment, in my opinion. It's uh, it actually has a darker tone than Return of uh, the Jedi, and uh, it actually uh, has the most, uh, some of the, one of the most compelling stories of a Star Wars movie about Anakin uh, turning uh, to the dark side and submitting himself to the Sith Lord Palpatine to, uh, in fear of uh, losing Padme in childbirth. And uh, the lightsaber duels in this movie are some of my favourites uh, of all time, especially between Yoda and Palpatine and Anakin and uh, Obi-Wan uh, in the finale. And uh, the opera scene is uh, one of my favourite Star Wars scenes, period. So atmospheric. At number three, the one that started it all 40 years ago, Star Wars Episode for A New Hope, or just Star Wars, depending on uh, what you want to call it. Uh, this movie is a, a true landmark in cinema history. It's a... Uh, it's just, uh, it's a, it's a, a guide how to make a flawless uh, cinematic experience. I mean, uh, Mark Hamill, Carrie Fisher and Harrison Ford couldn't have been more perfectly cast. And even if Luke starts out whiny when he's like, but I was going to Tarshi Station to pick up some power converters. That was the purpose of his character arc from uh, gr turning from a, a whiny uh, teenager to a mature hero. And uh, Darth Vader being uh, one of uh, cinema's most most legitimately awesome villains and uh, the the visual effects in this movie are uh, uh, still as groundbreaking and uh, will take uh, your breath away uh, as they were uh, back then they hold up at number five a controversial choice uh, but star wars episode five the empire strikes back isn't uh, quite my favorite star wars movie but uh, it's close uh, but i still absolutely love everything about this movie don't get me wrong it takes everything from a new hope and up it's up to 11. Uh, the uh, Battle of Hoffa being one of the most uh, legitimately uh, amazing spectacles uh, 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 for a Star Wars battle. Uh, the Yoda training scenes are thought-provoking and uh, the uh, uh, greatest cinematic uh, twist uh, that's uh, iconic as hell, Luke, I am your father, must uh, have uh, made uh, the entire fan base just gasp in awe and they couldn't freaking wait to, to see where the story would go uh, three years from then. Uh, yeah, The Empire Strikes Back is a is another landmark of cinema and a cinematic extravaganza. And, and finally, at number one, uh, the most controversial opinion of all time, but I believe Star Wars The Force Awakens is my favourite Star Wars movie. And this uh, movie just uh, completely caught me off guard. I, I underhyped this at the time. I mean, it's a, it combines the old and the new of to uh, satisfy uh, all of the fans. Uh, Ray, uh, BB-8, uh, Finn and uh, Kylo Ren, Snoke and Captain Phasma and Mars Kanaza are the most three-dimensional and uh, iconic Star Wars characters in my opinion and uh, Han Solo's death is one of the most legitimately saddest moments in the entire franchise uh, just uh, the just the action scenes are are the best uh, the it finally brings back and restores practical effects uh, to uh, the saga and the cliffhanger is my favorite movie cliffhanger to date when Rey meets Luke on up to the force awakens uh, 
is a freaking blast uh, and uh, one of my favourite movies of all time. So that was my ranking of the 13 Star Wars movies so far. Uh, uh, we'll see how the Han Solo movie in episode 9 turn out. Well, I love you guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this ranking. And what's your ranking of the Star Wars movies? Please comment and let me know. Please like this video and subscribe. Please follow me on Twitter and on Google Plus and on Instagram. And I'll see you next time and stay tuned for my spoiler talk for The Last Jedi. And remember, movies are us. Bye, guys. Nice.